Thank you so much for being part of this uh, discussion. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here and to, to learn from all of you. My name is Nathan Schneider, and I'm a professor of media studies at the University of Colorado Boulder in the United States. And um, I'm going to share a bit about the work that me and my lab and some other collaborators have been doing uh, around online governance. And I'm really looking forward to this discussion because smart cities have not been a item of discussion um, in, uh, in, in these, dis in these uh, efforts so far. Uh, so I'm really interested in learning from the questions and the challenges that, that you all bring forward. Um, I, I was in a conversation the other day where somebody, you know, we mentioned reputation systems and somebody immediately thought of the, you know, the Chinese social credit system or the, the U.S. Um, bank run credit system, pretty oppressive systems of, of control and governance. Um, and, you know, to be honest, in many cases, I've thought of smart cities in that way, too. But I think that if we bring in appropriate forms of self-governance, you know, as I think you you all know, um, th this uh, th these technological possibilities take on, you know, a very different hue than the kind of corporate-driven approach that at least we tend to see um, here in in the Americas. Um, so, I'm going to uh, share a few a few pictures. Um, introduce this this tool we've been building, and um, and and then we'll move on to the exercise. And Caroline will will take it from there. So, uh, a lot of these questions came up for me um, with particular acuity in the early months of the pandemic, um, when an amazing outpouring of mutual aid efforts started to emerge around the world, neighborhoods, communities coming together, helping each other. Um, and, and there was a lot of media coverage of this, um, but I'd seen this before. I'd, I'd, I'd seen a number of mutual aid efforts. One that really came to mind for me was, was a relief effort after Hurricane Sandy in New York City in 2012. And, um, and often in at least recent years, they don't last. They, um, uh, the, as soon as a difficult question comes up that, kind of enthusiasm and excitement um, turns into, you know, unbearable conflict and people just kind of dissolve away. Um, and so I, I kept thinking about what is it that, you know, what is it about our digital tools that makes it so hard for us to address the really hard challenges that our communities face? Because many of these communities are really heavily dependent on, on digital tools. And could we design them differently? And I was thinking about the fact that um, in the United States, at least the first case of the COVID-19 pandemic was actually detected at a hospital founded by nuns, Catholic nuns, whose order got its start in Canada during a pandemic about a century earlier. You know, so it made me wonder, what would it take to create infrastructure out of this pandemic that is socially durable enough you know, to last into the next one a century later. Hopefully it will be at least that long. Um, in the course of, of exploring these kinds of questions, I um, developed some research around what I've come to call implicit feudalism. This idea that in our online interfaces, um, we have a kind of default logic, um, an assumption that admins and mods and you know, sometimes what are called benevolent dictators are gonna run our communities that are essentially unaccountable. This is built into the software design in so many spaces that we rely on in our everyday lives. And, um, and I think that it actually has political consequences. It means that because we don't have the mechanisms to do simple things like elections and term limits and setting up juries, our ability to practice accountable democracy online uh, becomes limited. Um, I, I was inspired by cases like Creative Commons, a licensing regime that has really had impact all over the world um, and that is based on the idea of providing a few simple tools, in this case, legal tools, as well as a little bit of software, um, so that it's easy for people to take another path. Um, this is a case where they're doing it with copyright law. 
What if we did it with some of the practices um, of, of online governance? Um, so over the last couple of years, my lab has been working with uh, a range of groups, um, including those mutual aid groups, uh, as well as open source communities and activists of, of different stripes, um, uh, cooperatives, uh, to try to design tools that would be appropriate for the kind of self-governance uh, that they really aspire toward. Um, and, and, and this effort has gotten me involved in a project called the Meta Governance Project, actually founded by Lawrence Lessig, who also founded the, the um, uh, Creative Commons movement. And, um, and we're building tools and doing research um, around the future of online governance, working with you know, scholars and practitioners, developers, entrepreneurs, activists, policymakers, that sort of thing, uh, to create a kind of connective layer to bring governance tools where people already are. Now, one aspect of this question that I'm really gonna focus on today, because we've got a number of parallel projects um, is the question of interfaces. What kinds of tools, what kinds of visual experiences might we use to design um, creative governance practices? So my contribution in, in, to that question has been this, this web app called Community Rule. It's at communityrule.info. This is a, a live website here. Um, and uh, Community Rule, has a few uh, features that I'll, I'll introduce to you. First of all, um, and this is really what we're gonna be focusing on, um, is it has a set of templates and, and we just captured these templates uh, in a simple book um, uh, that, the, you know, that you'll be seeing soon. And these are just a few patterns that we um, noticed are pretty widespread in the world. We're pretty conservative in our approach. You know, What is it that lots of groups do and that seems to work? Um, and so they're very simple, basic patterns uh, that people can explore and then actually adapt. If you press the fork button here, you can start editing this template, moving things around, changing things up to uh, uh, fit the community you're trying to build. Um, and we've had a library of um, people uh, uh, that collects the rules that people have been developing. Uh, so, for instance, I'll, I'll just show you this one that I'm working on now, uh, working with a team building a small worker cooperative uh, to, to carry out some work. And, and you can see we've had a, we started with circles, um, but we've had a few drafts along the way. And we use this tool to construct a kind of very rough draft vision of, of how this group works together. The idea here, in some respects, is to um, update the, um, the idea of bylaws, uh, the, the, the structure and the genre, uh, rather than having these very arcane, hard to understand um, legal documents. Instead, what if we had, uh, we, we, we organized governance as something uh, that was intuitive and fun and playful, um, where you can see what the rules are and you can um, uh, and you can see how they relate to each other. Now, this is our current draft. We're um, beginning the process of moving into an, our third development phase, um, based on the kind of feedback and experience uh, that we've seen with this draft. Um, but uh, uh, but this is a work in progress, um, and in the process, we hope to learn um, how better to design governance tools so that when groups like those mutual aid networks start to form again and at, they're forming all the time. Um, they have ready at hand the means to uh, set up processes so that when those really hard decisions start coming up um, or you know, communities who are trying to figure out what to, how to manage their data or how to manage resources in their cities, um, they have uh, ready at hand in, in very accessible and understandable fashion uh, the tools that uh, that they need to to make those hard decisions and self-govern. I'll leave it there, and um, and the others will guide you through uh, the exercise that we have to come. I'm really, again, looking forward to learning from you about the kinds of questions and challenges that you're facing, and how um, better interfaces and and, and digital systems for self-governance um, might be able to help you. Thanks very much.